Okay, so today we're in the kitchen and we're going to add the rosette to the guitar. So what I've got is the soundboard that we did earlier with, um, with the guitar marks on it, remember? And then I've also got the plan, or the, in my case, the photograph of the guitar. So all I need to do is take a ruler and let's pan you down. And we can measure the distance from the top of the guitar to the edge of the hole. In this case, it's 10.5. We can mark that then onto the, onto the guitar, 10.5, with a soft pencil. And then we can measure the diameter of the hole itself. Okay. Transfer that on. So we've now got the extent of the hole marked and then divide that by two. Five is uh, 4.2. And there we mark the center hole. And that's where we're gonna do um, the work from. I'm gonna take this rosette. And what I'm gonna do is take a Dremel router on a, um, on a compass, and I'll show you that in, in a second. And we'll cut the hole just deep enough for this to go in. Now this is, you can see the wood goes all the way through. So what we'll do, and this is about, I don't know, that looks about half a mil, mil half a mil to a mil thick. We'll cut out a hole so this is just proud and then we'll cut it back using a scraper so that it's absolutely flush and smooth with the surface. Okay, let's get on to that then. So back in the garage again now. This is the tool that we're gonna use. So you can see it's got a slidey thing with a point. And what you do is you make a little hole, you stick that in, and then you put your Dremel in here, and you can cut perfect circles with it. So, let me take the Dremel, and what you'll find is the end unscrews like that, and then that will screw in to here, like that. And then you've got a little adjuster for, for depth, see that, and a little adjuster for Size. So we'll set that up, stick a bit in it, and then we'll see about cutting some holes. So what I'm going to do next, I've marked very gently where the where the um, the rosette's going to go. So I've basically drawn round it. Now I just need to put some sanding sealer on here just to make to, to help because otherwise, when I start when I start cutting, it's going to splinter all over the place. And a bit of sanding sealer will just be the job to uh, to make it make it good so I'm just painting a bit of it on not much just with one of these foam brushes and that's good to go i will come back to that when it's dry and we're ready to cut the hole now i should say the one thing you'll notice at the moment is that i've still got the full guitar shape on here i've not yet drawn on or i'm not going to cut out yet the, the cut out now the reason for that is at the moment it's still completely flip overable if i make a mess and I drop if I if I make a mess when I'm cutting the rosette or I drop my phone on it or something to make a massive dent I still have the option to flip it over and to use the other side once you've cut out the cutout it's fixed so just a little tip there so for the next bit the sanding seal is dry and what I've done is taped this um, soundboard down onto a, onto a big piece of wood because what I'm gonna have to do now is to drill the hole so you measure the size of the spike, get a drill bit the right size, and then drill through the soundboard and into the wood below so that this spike has got room to fit in. So very, very carefully find the center. It's obvious if you get the wrong, the wrong place for the center, then the hole's gonna be in the wrong place. And then, We drill through and then we should find that this fits in the hole there we are and we're good to go now what I've done is I've set this very carefully so that it's just just proud it's hardly proud at all so what I want to do is just try out how it's going to work so I want to see what it's going to do to the wood so I'm looking here now where the rosette goes 
and I'm going to make the first cut to be well inside that rosette. So if it makes a mess, I can hide it under the rosette later. And if it, if it, if I burn the wood, if I have it too fast and burn the wood, it doesn't matter because I'll slow it down to come to the outside. If I've got it too slow and it starts chopping the wood up horribly, then again, because it's in the middle, I should be okay. Okay, that's the right place now. So here we go. So safety glasses, protect your eyes. You've only got two. And then... I tend to have it, try and play around. You want it going as fast as possible to get a good cut, but without burning the wood. So if you see it starting to burn the wood, lay it down again. Now, what I'm gonna do next is inspect that cut and see see what it's been like. So there's a fair amount of... Okay, so this wood's not all that happy. So what I'm going to do is make sure the thing's nice and fast for the, for the other cuts. And also, I might make sure that I'm cutting in the direction that goes with the wood. Um, it may be that this bit is a little bit blunt as well, so I might put a, a sharper bit into the next bit as well. Okay, so now I've got a cut that I'm fairly happy with. So what I'm going to do is just cut this very, very slowly now just taking a very, very small amount. And then I'm gonna try it against the, the rosette. I'm gonna slowly, slowly bring the circle in so that the insides match. And I'm gonna slowly, slowly take the circle out so the outsides match. I can then press the rosette into place and see if I've got the right depth. Hopefully I haven't. And then I can just take it down a little bit further, but very, very gently taking it slowly further and further down. Go too far, <laughs> you'll cut a hole in the wood. Um, so that's what I do now. And one of the things to, to remember is if you cut at the very top, then that's where the neck's going to come in. So if you make a mess and go a bit too far, that will be that will hopefully be hidden if you're careful with the neck. So now I've been around a few times, I'm getting very, very close now to the inside diameter. So what I'm going to do now is slowly move across to the outside diameter. So the whole thing will then fit in. Right, so let's do that next one again. So my protection and let's start this time. I'm slowly moving it outwards. So. It's important here that you make sure that all these all these bolts are staying tight because if it slips you're going to make a mess. So I've been around this now, I've got a reasonable depth so I've been measuring the depth as I go with one of these so you can put it in that way around and measure the depth. So 0.9 at the moment and then obviously you can take your one of these, your rosette, and you can measure it, and that's sort of 1.2. So I want it to stay prior to 1.2, 0.9, I'm getting very close now. And what you can do is, if you're getting a lot of, um, if you're getting a lot of bits and bobs sticking out, you can go around with a standing knife blade and very, very, very carefully just trim off some of those extra bits. And then you can try your rosette in the hole. Remember, the gap bit goes at the top. The best way is to put it in at the bottom first so the ends can move a little bit and that's fitting quite nicely into the hole. It should be a very tight fit all the way around. You can see that's going in nicely there. And I can make sure that's it all the way around 
few loose bits there, but generally speaking, that's a nice fit and I can feel it's just proud of the surface. That's looking good. I think that's ready to be glued in. So next thing I'm going to do is to glue it in. I'm just going to use um, just the same old um, tight bond again, um, aliphatic. I'm going to be very sparing. I'm going to put a smear of it on the back of here, a little bit on the edges, and then I'm going to press it in. Now, if you put too much glue in, it won't go in properly because the glue will sort of form a hydraulic lock and you won't be able to get it in all the way. Equally, if you put a lot of glue on it, what will happen is the wood will start to swell very slightly. And if you allow that to happen, so you put the glue on and then leave it for a while, you might find it no longer fits in the hole. Um, so that would be bad. Make sure to get the, the gap at the top, as I said, so that it will be covered up by the fretboard when you put it on. Okay, so here we are. Adding a bit of glue. There we go, I don't want too much. So I'm going to spread it out with my finger. I've got it on a bit of paper note and not directly onto the soundboard. Oops, the inevitable will happen. I'll spill glue on it. And I'm being pretty sparing. It doesn't matter if you get glue on the front because we're going to be trimming that back later. Okay, now there's that. So there's a little bit around the edge. Just help it bond. A bit on the inside as well. It's a bit on there already, to be honest. Okay. Let's double check there's not too much there. And now we can put it in place. Just carefully lining it up so it's in the middle. It's about there. And then we can press it in. All the way around and make sure. Okay, let me put me a bit of paper on. favourite old document. Okay, just make sure, convince myself that it's all in and there's no high spots. And then, clean piece of document on top of it. Piece of wood on top of that. I've cut from guitar and then we'll stick as much weight as we can find onto the top of it. So, some of this, some of this, and then I'll add a few more bits and bobs. And that's done. We now leave that for a couple of hours to make sure it's completely dry. If it's cold and wet like it is, damp like it is in here, might leave it overnight. There we go. Come back to that later. So now then, it's been a couple of hours, the moment of truth, take the wood off, okay, now it hasn't stuck, or well, the paper hasn't stuck, and there we are. Now we just need to take a newly sharpened scraper, and we should be able to just bring that back, okay, you can see what's happening there, just bring that back until it matches, matches the sandboard depth. And here we are, pretty much done. Got a nice flat surface. It feels like it's part of the wood. You don't, shouldn't be feeling a bump or anything. Um, if you've done it right, it'll be just absolutely flat. You can sometimes tell, you can tell by feeling it, but you can also tell because the slightly shiny sanding sealer um, will be gone from around the edges. It's still got a slight shiny bit on the edge. 
we know that it's still slightly proud of the surface and there we go. And again, take the hoover. And that is just right. So the next part is we wonder, do we want to do any extra to it or do we want to leave it as it is? And I think I might just leave this one as it is. But if I want any extra bits on it, what you can get is this stuff. So you can see um, it's got white, black and white on it. I can get it focused. And what you can do is you can make extra rings and you bend this stuff round. You might need to wet it. And you can get some extra circles in there. Now, this is quite a wide one, so I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. Um, it's quite nice on its own. You could even butt this right up against if you wanted a little black and white. I think I'm going to leave it as it is. I think I like that as it is. So what I'm going to do is to cut out the hole next. So cutting out the hole, very similar to when we just did the routing for this for this bit to go in. If you take your circle cutter um, and then we're going to set it up so that we cut out the circle of the right of the right diameter. Now I know the diameter of this one is nine centimeters. So I want four and a half from the edge of the cutter to the point which is that. So I can do that up there. What I'm going to do now um, is just to check that that's right. So I go up to the bit at the top where it's where it's not going to show as much and what I can do is just have this loose and then I'm just going to push it down a little bit without going and just make a little mark so that I can see where that's going to be. And if I look at that now I can see that's in about the right place. It's going to leave me a little rim around the outside, which is about right. What I don't want to do is cut right up to this edge, because um, that's going to leave me with a weakened edge. So that looks right. Now, before you cut the hole, just have a last check that you don't want to put any more rings in, because once you've cut the hole out, you lose the hole in the middle, and that's it. You can't do any more. So um, we're ready to do. So let's cut the hole out. So what we're going to do is a number of passes. I don't want to cut the whole thing out in one go. I'm going to go slowly deeper and deeper until the middle bit falls out. So again, nice and fast on the... Okay, we can check those as we go. <clears throat> and again, if there's a lot of um, a lot of these sort of bits, you can you can just take a little stem knife blade and just start to cut those back a little bit so we don't get frayed edges. Okay. And then when you're happy with that cut, we can do it again. And just like last time, we just make slight adjustments. So I'm going to loose. All I do is loosen that off, press it down slightly, not too much, and tighten it up again. And then we go around again. And if the edges are all looking okay, we just keep going until out the other side. And of course as you go you can measure. I know that this is 3 mil, so I can take this and I can stick it in there and then measure how deep I've got. So I've got to about 2 mil, so I know I've got another mil or so to go. So two or three more passes and we'll have it done. Okay, so this time round, I think we've done it. I think I can see underneath. If I measure it, I'm measuring 
yeah, three and a half. So that should, in theory, have gone all the way through. So let's take this off. If it wants to come, and that should come. That should come off. Oh, slight bit that's not come off. Slight bit I need to go through there. Be really careful now. I saw it move that time, so that's that last little bit done. And the theory is we can lift that out, and there's the hole in the middle. And that just needs cleaning up. Now obviously where the grain is running this way, these top and bottom edges are going to be a bit rougher than these side edges, which we've cut nicely as well. Okay, so that's done. Now we just need to clean it up. So we're going to do is take a little bit of sandpaper. This is 400, 200, 400, that kind of, that kind of thing. And then what I'm going to do is just carefully run it around the inside. I want to keep the hole nice and square. I don't want to sort of round the edges off too much. I should be able to take that now down to something which is which is nice. Okay, both sides. And there we are. There's the hole in the middle. Nice and smooth, all done. Um, okay, so next thing I want to do is to obviously cut out the shape. We've got the shape drawn on already from when we measured the hole out. So let's get this on the bandsaw and we'll cut it out. So what I've done here is I've freehand, I've just drawn a line around the outside. I want to bay sort of maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre outside the line. So I, do, I want this to be slightly bigger because when I come to fit it, chances are the the, the base that I'm fitting it to is not exactly this size. If you cut it to an exact size, it won't fit. So what you do is you cut it to a slightly bigger size and then you trim it when it's fitted. That's important. The other thing I've done, I've drawn a straight line along here because I want to take this piece here, this piece of wood, and I can use that as a reinforcing strip for the back um, of, of, the, of the, well, for the back of the back, if you like. So I'll cut that out first and uh, we'll go from there. save that so it's crossed the grain so it's going to give strength to the back when I join it on. Okay now for the main bit and we'll switch on switch on the extractor. I have not cut out the cutout yet and again for the same reason the longer I can leave it like this the more chance I've got of flipping it over if I have some sort of disaster. I've got the most most of it done but um, you could easily drop something on this and make a huge dent in which case I want to be able to flip it over so I'll keep it like that for a while and when it comes to fitting it that's when I'll cut out the cutout. Cut out the cutout there we are and that's done so there is the first part of the uh, of the soundboard done. You can start to hear you start to hear it ring when you tap it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is to make some struts. The all important struts for the back, which are going to hold it together and stop it from folding up or breaking when we, when we put the strings on. So there we are, job done. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, um, there'll, be, there'll be more to come. So if you want to subscribe, feel free. If you don't want to subscribe, you don't have to. All right, see you next time.